G'day folks, this is Shane. Welcome to the channel. If you're new here, don't forget to subscribe and also click that little notification bell if you get some value out of this video. So what are we talking about today? So Sunday coming up this week, only in a few days time from shooting this video, I've actually got to record a live gig. Now it's one of my live gigs. We're doing it for my main channel over at In The Blues. I'm getting a whole lot of friends together and we're basically gonna be doing a blues jam. And I wanna try and do this the best I can. So there's a lot of gear that you kinda of need to get this done right. And I'm gonna take pretty much the majority of my video equipment as well as some of the audio equipment to do a basic sort of eight track recording that I can then mix on my PC later on. So this video is gonna be a little bit different because I'm gonna have most of my gear on the table. I'm not gonna have multiple camera shoots. I'm gonna be probably behind the camera most of the time. So let's get into it. So let's start with the audio gear. The first thing you want to do when you're recording a band is to bring an audio interface or something that can hook up to the computer. I much prefer these because this way I don't actually need a computer. There's no moving parts or anything like that. There's less that can go wrong with a Zoom R16 unit like this than with a computer on the day. And at least that's my experience anyway. I used to have rack units and all that kind of stuff, but it was a really big pain in the ass to take to a gig. This particular unit is great. I used to have two of these and you used to be able to daisy chain them together and get 16 inputs as you can see on the back here. But now I use eight only and eight only is usually enough. So we're gonna have vocals, guitar one, guitar two, guitar three, bass, kick, snare, overhead. I'd already planned that out being that I only had eight tracks. Now not all of them have phantom power. If you don't know what that is, I'll give you a quick explanation. Some microphones require phantom power and some don't. So the way I'm gonna get around using the microphones I wanna use, as opposed to using the ones, the dynamic mics I probably don't wanna just use all the time, is I'm gonna bring a little mixer like this, and this will give me two extra phantom power channels that I can then send to the actual R16 if I need it. But I wanna plan out this a little bit better than what I've just explained right now, so I'll get all of my microphones that I plan on bringing, and we'll see how it goes. Without question, my favorite microphone of all time, just in terms of versatility and sound, would have to be this. This is the Rode M3 microphone. These aren't that expensive, considering the price of some of the Rode microphones that are out there. But this particular mic works extremely well on vocals. It works great on electric guitar amplifiers. It works great on snare. It's just an awesome microphone that you can power internally with a nine volt battery. So that's what I'll be doing with these. They'll be used for the guitar amps. And I can also just plug this in straight into the passive channels of the actual R16 from Zoom. And I won't take up those two phantom powered channels that I actually need. So uh, awesome microphones. If you like recording electric guitar, these kill pretty much anything else I've ever used over the last sort of 15 years. I love them. For all of the vocal tracks, I'll be using this. This is the Rode M2. No, the channel's not sponsored by Rode. I'm just a huge fan. I actually went and purchased this today. I got it for 149 bucks here in Australia. That's actually really, really good. I've had one of these before and I sold it when I hit some tough times, unfortunately. And this is just a really great live performance condenser microphone. So this will require one of the phantom powered channels on the actual desks that we'll be sending to the PA, but not on the R16. I'm saving those two for the drums. So this will be the vocal mic. If you haven't seen one of these before, the Rode M2s might also be a really cool podcast microphone as well. I might do a follow-up video on that. And given the price and how they perform, they're pretty sweet. So that'll be the vocal mic. Now, in terms of the overhead microphone on the drums, I'll probably either bring just one of these two NT3 microphones. These are Rhodes as well. Now, to put this into some sort of context, so in case you think I'm sponsored by these guys, which I'm clearly not, I've had these mics for over 10 years and they're still going strong. The alternative to the NT3 would have to be this. You might laugh, but these Behringer C4s are actually really good. It's a matched set of pencil condenser microphones. They don't pick up quite the amount of low end that this would, but that's fine for an overhead situation. These will work great. I've used these a number of times since I purchased them. And what can I tell you? I think they, they're a really great set. What I might do too, I'm using a GH5 right now, which I'll show you later. I've also got the audio adapter. I might just use these two on the camera as a room sound or I might use these. So these are the questions I need to answer. I'll bring them all and we'll, I'll make a decision on the day. 
The kick drum mic will definitely be this, unless of course the drummer brings something that he wants to use, but I haven't used this in quite some time. This is one of my favorite kick drum mics of all time. I had a number of kick drum mics back in the day. I had probably three of them, and the JTS NX2 is about as close to the shore as you're gonna get without having to spend a whole lot of money. These are built extremely well. Also, um, I'm a huge fan of JTS microphones. I've still got, I think I've still got three all up. I've got their condenser, live condenser microphone for vocals, as well as their dynamic microphone, the NX8. Uh, and this kick drum mic is awesome. I've used it on albums over the years. And look at that grill. It's an absolute monster. In terms of the drums, I'll either be using this SM57. It's a copy by a company called Bock, but it's the same thing. They sound identical or I'll be using one of these. This is their Beta 57 kind of clone as well, which works extremely well. I've had these for years and years and years as well. They work great. I also like to have a backup vocal microphone as well. I'm gonna probably bring this one. This is the JTS NX 8.8. This is a, uh, actually a condenser microphone as well. It sounds great. It doesn't sound as good as the M2 in my opinion. It lacks a little bit of low end, but sometimes, depending on the room, Sometimes that's a good thing. You get less feedback and issues. So I'll bring them both and I'll make the judgment call on the day which one actually works better in the room. So uh, odds are you'll either see this or the M2 as the main vocal mic on the day. One of the things I don't have control over is the PA system. So I'm also gonna bring this microphone. This is the JTS NX8. And this will be my backup microphone if phantom power is not working on the desk or something like that. At least I'll be able to have a dynamic mic that I know and trust and use on a weekly basis. I use this for vocals every week. <laughs> Anytime I go anywhere, I take this microphone because I know it's gonna work. So yeah, it's always, a good, it's always just a great idea to have an option if something goes wrong. So one of the things you might be asking, isn't this overkill having so many microphones? Or maybe some people are asking, how did I get so many? So this particular collection is basically the tip of the iceberg. I have probably three times this amount of microphones in my collection, but that's not the point. The point is it goes back to the mid 2000s. None of this stuff was free. It's just the stuff that I've accumulated over the years. And what can I tell you? I use a lot of this stuff on a daily slash weekly slash monthly and yearly basis. There's a couple of these microphones I don't use a lot, like the Rode NT3s don't get a whole lot of use, but sometimes I want to record acoustic guitar and those are the microphones for the job. They have a particular sound that I like. I use the Rode M3s all the time. I use the 57 style mics a lot as well on my main channel. Now the NX 8.8 doesn't get a whole lot of use these days, but you know, it's a great mic to have. There's occasions where this will re really work wonders and maybe Sunday might be the day for this one to come out as well. So I just like to have a few options for different situations and scenarios, being that I record bands and I also record my own band and I also do other, st other stuff. It's great to have uh, like a series of microphones that you can use in almost any situation. Some days it's easy and you can bring the big stuff. Some days it's not and you need the small stuff. So that's how I look at it. These Behringer C4s, for example, are a great outdoor solution because they're small. I can just mount them on top of the camera, bring a little tripod or something, or a, or a mic stand, I should say. And it's a nice, easy solution for that as well. So there's a few other things I need to find and also get, including some stands some clips for the drums because I need to actually get the SM57 onto the snare drum. So that requires a clip as well. So I need to find all of that stuff and it's been a while since I've used any of it. Usually anytime I've recorded drums, the drummers usually have their own mics that they like to use and that's fine. Now, being that we've not discussed any of that, I'm gonna bring all of my own stuff just in case they don't have their own gear. But I still think I wanna use this. This NX2 is just a beast and it's been a while so uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. This is one of those mics you pick up and it feels like you could just, you could like hammer through a brick wall with it. It's, uh, it's something to behold. <laughs> Anytime I'm going from a PA system or the mixer straight into the zoom recorder, I like to have a whole lot of these as well. So stock up. I've had these maybe 12 years and yeah, you can never have too many of these things and odds are you're gonna see a few of these thrown on the ground. Notice this one's a stereo cable. It's got the two pins. So yeah, definitely great to have a couple of these also just in case. So there we have it. That's all I really need. Just make sure you bring some extension cables, of course, bring a power strip or a power board, whatever you prefer to call it. And I've got a whole lot of mic cables as well. I'm pretty sure I've got everything I need. My friend Rick is gonna be bringing 
some more mic cables just to be safe and sound. And we're gonna be doing a DI or direct out of the um, bass amp into the zoom, which is over here. So this is pretty much everything that I'll be bringing, which is crazy in terms of the audio gear. So let's see what I'll be bringing in terms of video gear. I need more space. With the exception of the GH5, which I'm shooting with right now, I'll be taking these three cameras as well as a couple of others as well. If you've been on the channel before, you know I, I'm a big fan of the FZ2500. It's a really great video camera. Uh, and these will all be on tripods too. They're all gonna be static shots. And then I can fiddle around with it in post. Now, being that I need to shoot at least two hours of video, unfortunately I'll be sort of limited to 1080p 60, which is fine, but you know, 4K is better. It just allows more options in editing, but I don't have enough memory cards, so I'll be shooting in 1080, and that's just the way that goes. And I've also got a couple of these as well. These are arguably some of my favorite cameras, the Panasonic G85s. There's two of those. I've got a 25mm lens on this one right now. That's what I'm shooting this video with, and this one's got the kit lens 14 to 42, but I also have a whole lot of other different lenses, Panasonic lenses for these cameras. I may actually just use the 25mm lenses on both of them, and I just, I love the picture quality out of those 25 mil lenses. I just think they're great. If you're looking to buy a camera out of all the ones I've got, I probably suggest the G85. I think it's really good. Now, I'm not just a Panasonic fanboy. I actually have a Sony 4K camcorder. Now this will be probably a more artistic shot. This might be on the kick drum. It might be an overhead uh, camera for the drums or something like that. I don't know yet where this will go. I need to plan out the shots. Just that little bit more than what I've already done just to make sure I've got enough. Either way, it's a good camera because it has a really wide angle lens, uh, at least in comparison, comparison to some of the ones I've got, and it just works, <laughs> which is another really great thing about it. The autofocus is great. Uh, it doesn't allow you to get the blurred backgrounds or anything like that, but it works really well. So I used to have two of these, by the way, but I sold one not too long ago, and I kept this one just for doing like run and gun sort of filming, either in the car or whatever. It's got a really great stabilizer, although it won't be used on the night in terms of stabilizer, stabilization, it's a really great little camcorder. And up last, we have this. Now this might be an emergency camera for something. I'm not exactly sure what. I don't even know if I'll use it because the frame rate won't actually match the rest of these cameras unless I change everything to 30p. But anyway, the fact is that the, this is an old CX110. This was my first HD camera. Shoots in 1080p. I bought it in San Francisco a long time ago. And I just thought this might make for just one shot that None of the others will be involved in, you know, it might just be a, a strange and obscure shot over one of the guitar players or something like that. So anyway, I'll take it. I don't have to use it, but it's, it works. So in true Sony fashion, even after it's, what is it? Probably eight or nine years old, it still works fine. <laughs> cool stuff. I shoot all the videos that I make now with these SanDisk Extreme Pros SDXC cards. The, one of the main reasons why is basically you can record into it, almost the entirety of the card in one big file, and that's gonna be perfect for what we're doing. Being that I need to record for two hours, or at least in one hour blocks, because I'll need to change batteries in a few of the cameras, it's great to just to have one big file at the end. Now, I'm also gonna, I've got like five or six of these, and most of them are 64 gig, but I'm gonna also bring a few of these guys as well, just as backups, just in case I run out of room. I shouldn't, but you never know. It's always good just to have a few spares. I like to label them as well just so I know which one's getting used, so I can find when I get home that one was probably the first one that I used and so forth across the board. Now these aren't bad, but these um, XD, they say Extreme Pros, but this is the XDSC, I think it is, and, and or HC, yeah. So these don't allow you to sort of get that extended recording functionality, at least not with the Panasonic cameras, nor with the Sony, I'm pretty sure too. So my suggestion is, get the Extreme Pros. They're a hell of a lot better. I'll leave some links in the description. One of the great things about the GH5 is it came free with this particular unit. This is an audio adapter, which just clips straight onto the camera, and it's got two XLR mic inputs here. It also supports phantom power and all that kind of stuff as well, which is great. So what I'm actually thinking of doing is using it with either these two mics here, which are the Rode NT3s, or I'm gonna be using them with the Behringer C4s, which are probably too close to focus on. Oh no, there we go, it worked. So, so uh, yeah, either I'll be using this particular pack into the actual camera, 
That way we get good room audio as well. And I've essentially got two extra tracks that I can sync in post just in Final Cut. Now I'll be doing all of my editing in Nuendo, which is kind of like Cubase for the main parts, but when it comes to just the room sound, I might actually just add it back in through Final Cut. So it'll either be the C4s being used in that capacity, or I'll be using uh, both of these Rode NT threes nt threes yeah that's right because these guys are the m3s it gets all a little bit too confusing and how's that for backlit awesome what you're looking at right now is pretty much how i make a living a lot of this stuff is stuff i use on a daily basis all of the camera equipment the microphones all of this kind of stuff so for me i'm going to make sure i pack this properly and i'll just walk over here and i'll show you this this is a bag i've had for a long time it's nice and padded has some different compartments for different things, actually fits the mixer in there perfectly. So I'll be packing all of this stuff properly, making sure I don't have any issues. There's the rest of the audio gear. Just one more quick overview here. As you can see, I may actually leave a couple of these mics at home. I think I'm getting a bit too OCD with that, but uh, how about all these cables? One day I'll get through them. Yeah, right. Thanks for watching guys, my name's Shane. If you do have any comments or questions about anything in this video, whether it be audio or video related, please let me know and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. It's amazing how much stuff you've got to get to get this done right, no doubt about it. Lots of cables, just lots of equipment, and hopefully it all fits in my car, I guess we'll see. But I think one of the best planning things you can do before one of these events is to kind of write everything down, what you want to do, how you want to shoot it, what cables you need, get everything, test everything, make sure it works, all that kind of stuff as well, and cable everything up and, and tie it up in a way that is very convenient for you to get it out of the bag and get it onto the floor and to do it in a time effective way. That's always important as well. Anytime I'm recording another band, say at a gig, and I have to take my computer with me and all that kind of stuff, I check everything and I pre-prepare before the event to make sure I don't make any mistakes once I'm there. So that's a huge thing as well. Check your microphones, check your cables, make sure all the cameras are working, make sure you have all your SD cards, all that kind of stuff, because it's really, really important that you can just set everything up and it's ready to go. So I hope this video has been helpful. If it is, give it a thumbs up. Thanks again for watching and I'll catch you soon. See ya.